Next speaker, 198. Ian Grosh. Mr. Grosh will be given one minute to speak. Mr. Grosh, Hello. are you there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I live in District 14, and my apartment looks out onto Commerce Street. I watched as the protesters were brutally attacked outside my window, and tear gas was released. We need to immediately defund the DPD and invest that money in community resources. The sort of tactics that have been used only lead to violence. We need to return all of the 1033 uh, equipment and stop the violence. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker, Speaker 71, April Pittman. Ms. Pittman, is that you? April Pittman, is that, are you on the line? Yes, I am on the line. Can you? hear me? We can hear you now. You can start now. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, my name is April Pittman. I am a resident of Dallas. Um, I originally grew up in uh, the South Oak Cliff area, um, moved here. Um, I'm around by the post office off of Sylvan. I just really want to speak on behalf of divesting funds from the police and actually investing in our community. I'm like 36 years old and I've seen the same tactics over and over again where what we do is we increase funding to the police, but we don't take care of anything in our community. I think that it's really important that we actually look at where crime comes from. A lot of violence and things like that comes from people not having resources, choices, and that there's an extremely huge wealth gap. If we wanna stop crime at its source, we'll actually put our money into education. I think it's ridiculous that we see mil military outfitting for police but we don't have proper PPE for like nurses and not sure what happened there. Yeah, something happened. Let's yeah, let, let's yeah. go to the next so we can resolve that if we can. Okay, your next speaker is Alicia. Caldry. What number is that? Speaker 193. Alicia Caldry, are you on the line? Do we have another name that we can go to?
Your next speaker is speaker 193, Alicia Cowdery. Ms. Cowdery. Hello. Yes, great, Ms. Cowdery, go ahead. Great. Hi, my name is Alicia Cowdery. I live in District 1, and I would like to express my outrage at the military force used at Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge on the evening of June 1st by DPD and Chief, and Chief Renee Hall, National Guard, and State Troopers. We were herded onto the bridge and then trapped on a bridge where tear gas, smoke bombs, and sponge bullets were deployed on peaceful protesters. No orders were given to vacate the bridge at any point. I was born and raised in Dallas, and I have seen the city grow, but never evolve. This city's development and wealth has always been at the expense of black and brown communities. Dallas is one of the most segregated cities in the United States. We have one of the highest child poverty rates, yet the approved operating budget for the city of Dallas for 2020 is $3 billion. $542 million is allocated to DPD. I ask for the resignation of Chief Hall, divestment from DPD, investment in black communities, racial and racial equity and justice are long overdue. And I will hold all of the elected officials, such as you, Mayor Eric Johnson, which I voted for you, and Chad West, which uh, I voted you. for. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker is Speaker 186, Julissa Garcia. Ms. Garcia, you'll be given one minute to speak. Which number was that? Speaker 186. One eight six. Okay, gotcha. Julissa Garcia, are you there? For one minute. If not, let's move on to the next name. Yes, Ms. Hello? Garcia? Yes. Okay, it has my time started? No, not yet, go ahead. Okay, hello, my name is Julissa and I live in Cedar Hill, but I grew up and was born in Dallas. I am here today to demand the defunding of the DPD and investment into our communities and for the DPD to stop their relations and partnerships with ICE. Get ICE out of Dallas city jails. Dallas is one of the cities with the, most, with the highest rates of deportations in the U.S. As the daughter and granddaughter of immigrants, I've lived my entire life with fear that someone I love will be taken from me for simply existing within the U.S. The DPD has never made me feel safe. In fact, they're the ones who have instilled fear in me. So defund them. They do not need $500 million, community does. Invest in schools, cultural programs, and public housing. Get the DPD out of black and brown communities and get ICE out of Dallas jails. Being pulled over for a broken tail light and not turning your signal on should not result in the deportation or death of someone. ICE and the DPD do nothing but harm black and brown communities. Instead, fund cultural programs that keep immigrant families together. Black lives matter. Black immigrant lives matter. I yield my time. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, members, um, it is 5 o'clock p.m. and this meeting of the Dallas City Council stands in recess. We'll reconvene at 5.30 p.m. It is 5.39 uh, and we're back from a short recess. We're gonna continue with the speaker list, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Your next speaker is speaker 82, Ronnie Mestis. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, good evening, uh, Council Member uh, Madrano. Pleasure to see you again. I've been gone for a while. I was in Chicago, quarantined. Um, came back Monday night. Couldn't use my bridge to get home, but that's fine because I'm with the protesters and I, I understand. Um, what are we going to accomplish with, with tonight? What I would hope immediately 
and I've heard several people mention this, is to do away with a qualified immunity. And obviously, we're never going to unfold or get rid of the police department because then who are you going to call? So it's training, training, more training. Do it in the military. And whether people like military or not, that's the way you get things done. You know, it's, it's, you may not like it, but it's part of the deal. I was involved with the Santos Rodriguez thing, and I knew what I might be expecting. But, you know, it's part, it's part of, you know, the right to express your, you know, your opinion or your, you know, your, your, your hate, you know, for what's going on in this country. Um, so, again, training. Uh, do away with the qualified immunity. And look at uh, President Obama's uh, 21st century uh, pol policing uh, agenda. He, he, he made, he's already done this. There's plenty of people that have done this. You just got to enforce it and implement it. And do away in the training, do away with any kind of choke cold pressure point, any of that stuff to, to you know, for what? No, it's got to be, it's got to be part of the policy. It's got to be done away with. Um, can you hear your me? Is, thank you. Your time is up. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your Welcome next, back. Your next speaker is speaker 199. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, my name is Albany Haynes. Uh, according to the speakers list, I, I did provide my, I did not provide my Oak Cliff address, which is inaccurate and problematic. America and its black citizens have had a strained relationship since its founding. And with the proposed budget for the next fiscal year, Dallas's leadership lacks understanding of how the city has systemically oppressed its black and poor. And we are still run by systemic racism. In the budget, drastic cuts are made to the funding of human and social needs, which provide services and programs to meet basic needs, such as shelter the homeless and the advancement of equity and inclusion. This was already the least funded priority in the city's budget. Black citizens make up the majority of the unsheltered population and also has the highest rate of poverty out of any race in the city, and yet you all are making cuts to human and social needs. Comparatively, public safety is the second most funded out of all of the priorities with over $900 million. I am disappointed that the city is throwing money at a system that needs reform instead of financial reward. When our government chooses to withdraw funds from housing and opportunity and, and instead pours money to the funding of broken systems, then you, its leaders, are innately creating a formula for high crime, tense community Thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Division. Thank you. Your next speaker. Who's next? It says me. Miss Boyd? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you can go. Okay. Uh, my name is Jody Boyce Yellowfish. I'm American Indian. I chair MMIW Texas. I'm a resident of District 1. As a lifelong resident of Dallas, I felt the racism that runs deep in our city. We cannot ignore the fact that Dallas was built on stolen land with stolen labor by our black brothers and sisters. As a citizen of Dallas, I demand we defund DPD. I demand that we discuss budget constantly. I demand that our citizens understand the absurd amount of funds given to DPD. I demand that funds help heal our people by funding ways to help homelessness, mental illness, public spaces and programs, and so much more. I demand that we are safe and healthy as a whole. I ask that you please listen to us and not have us feel like these demands are being left upon people that do not want to hear us. I demand that our citizens are respected and I hope and pray that this isn't just a moral issue. I hope and pray that this touches your heart and that you do move forward with the right respect with people and listening to these demands. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker.
I'm sorry, we'll go to your next speaker, speaker seven, Jared Willis. Mr. Willis? Mr. Willis? Mr. Willis? Your next speaker is Keith Sargent, speaker 153, Keith Sargent. I'm here, can you all hear me? Yes, begin. Okay, as evidenced by worldwide protests sparked by the murder of George Floyd, it's clear that systemic racism must absolutely be destroyed. In my opinion, a major overhaul of this sort can't come to pass without accountability. At a minimum, here's what that looks like. We should establish clear and concise parameters concerning the use of force, which means clear and concise consequences for law enforcement personnel who break these use of force parameters. We need changes to the screening and vetting process for anyone wishing to join or currently in law enforcement. We should institute a committee that reviews incidents related to police misconduct or complaints about law enforcement. Uh, we should periodically review and modify these and other accountability considerations. So for every attempt at establishing accountability and for every step that we take towards ending systemic racism, there are counterforces that stand in our way. For instance, if I say black lives matter, there might be someone who says all lives matter. While that's true, the very action of saying all lives matter as a response to black lives matter, it eats at the worldwide unity that's been established by these global protests. Unity is vital to us moving forward, so we must remain unified. Besides, black lives matter does not mean only black lives matter. Simply put, Black Lives Matter means Black Lives Matter too. In closing, I'd like to say that people across the world have turned the murder of George Floyd into incredible moments towards justice. As I joined protesters on the night of May the 29th, braving tear gas and flashbang grenades, I, I realized that we have to capitalize on this momentum and begin to make changes now. More importantly though, once these protests die down and life returns to normal, we cannot allow our movement towards change to be sporadic. To everyone who can hear this audio, your Thank votes, you. your protests, your tweets, your outrage, your unity have not gone unnoticed. We Thank must you. act together as a unit to keep this fight alive. Uh, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep voting up. and keep protesting. Thank you. Watch George Floyd take his last breath. So if that didn't affect you and make you want to reassess the... And not Hello? Brown? Thank you. My name is Reverend Stacy Brown, and I represent Faith in Texas. The, result, the proposal presented by the city manager and the statement by the chief of police is nothing more than an attempt to pacify the citizens of Dallas who are seeking change that is systematically dismantling the issues of systemic racism. Furthermore, your failure to include policies that uh, ch policy changes that were brought by community organizations such as Mothers Against Police Brutality, Dallas Black Clergy, and other organizations adds insult to the injuries that DPT has produced. Let's call a thing a thing. This proposal is simply a perpetuation of the cycle of abuse that is meaning bringing meaningless gifts after acts of violence presented by the DPD. Either you implement policies that are meaningful and address the systematic racism in this system, or we will replace you by somebody who will. Thank you for your time. Next slide, Julie Ross. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm a district resident, uh, District 14 resident, so I'd appreciate a minute 30 if I may. I'll begin. Um, my name is Julie Ross, District 14 resident of over 20 years. I'm a disability rights activist and serve as a board member of statewide disability advocacy organizations. And we're approaching the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And this civil rights law entitles individuals with disabilities to the right to reasonable accommodations, including protections when interacting with the police as victims, as witnesses, or as the accused. Police need to understand what rights the ADA ensures, including access to support and reasonable accommodations as mandated by state and federal law. Chief Hall has confided in me that DPD does not comprehend these rights well and is in need of training. Please contact me to be connected with Disability Rights Texas, our state civil rights organization, to facilitate this critical training and education. My city councilman Blewett can connect you with me for their information. Civil rights under the ADA are guaranteed. No training is no excuse. 
DPD must properly identify disability, both apparent and non-apparent, and hold the expectation of best possible motive for an individual's intent, as opposed to racial profiling, demonization of disability, and criminalization of First Amendment defenders. With comply or die policing, disabled individuals are at risk of injury and death, and account to up, of, up to half of all victims of police brutality. Police must expect that people have, may have a justifiable reason for non-compliance, such as a communications disorder, developmental disability, or mobility disability, or a brain disease. This can make Thank it impossible you. to follow police commands. One last thing, I demand that Mayor Johnson work for disability rights. I've worked with him in tech led, tech sledge, and he needs to know that disability rights are civil rights. Thank you. Thank you. Your next speaker, Speaker 35, Riz Chan. Good afternoon and thank you for your time. Uh, I will not replete, repeat all of the opposition to the various things that have been talked about, PPD, ex excessive force, the militarization of our police. Uh, that has to stop. The military equipment should be returned, locked up and put away or whatever needs to be done. And instead the focus needs to be shifted to retraining and, and, and teaching our police force to de-escalate. We have to change the culture that has existed in the police department for a long time and has actually gotten worse under Chief Hall. I do believe Chief Hall needs to go. At the end of the day, in any organization, a leader is accountable for the behavior of their people and when it is this egregious, they have to go. The duty of law enforcement is to protect our citizens and our constitutional rights, including the right to peaceful protest. Trapping them and arresting them is not consistent with that. We've defunded education and mental health for years. We need to refund it. The biggest thing, however, that we can do is engage with the communities. Change happens when business, government, community leaders, and residents come together to make change happen. My suggestion is that we do some listening sessions in different parts of the city, engage people from all those constituencies, to have conversations with small groups of people and really figure out what's going on and find ways to connect and make this a human issue and not just a distant issue for so many who are not directly affected by it. And I'm happy to participate in that. Thank you for your time. Speaker 143, Joey Cassiano. Hi, um, so I am a resident of District 14. Um, I think uh, really just being kind of uh, rational about it, if you were to take maybe even 10% of the police budget and give it to the Homeless Commission, that would be a, a really big step for them. And that would also kind of prevent um, uh, certain crimes of quote unquote vagrancy from happening from displaced persons. Uh, but I do want to note that even for if uh, even if council does not care about these issues, uh, I would hope you would at least care about your political career enough to appease the citizens by making those actual steps um, for changing the budget to help make Dallas a safer place. And uh, part of what I do in the LGBTQ community is to try and get as many people out to vote and registered as possible. And I can guarantee you any council member who does not take it seriously, I'm gonna do everything I can to unseat you. And if you're not worried about this, if you if this has not lit a fire under your ass, then you have already lost. And that is it, I yield my time. Speaker 68, Essence Hunter. Hello, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So first of all, I'd like to go ahead and start off by saying Black Lives Matter and DPD needs to be defunded at this moment. The fact that you guys have literally the largest city and the large budget in our city is absolutely gross. Okay, the fact that only 4% of that goes to your training is disgusting. And less than 1% actually goes to com police community engagement. Okay, how are the people in the neighborhood supposed to actually trust you if you're not actually there? Okay, not only that, the object of our police department is to protect all of our citizens, all of our people. So if that's the case, please tell me why that all the transgender, like Dallas is the number one leading city where transgender people are getting killed daily. Okay, somebody needs to actually go ahead and answer for that. I went ahead and pulled a quote from you guys' website. We value human life. 
the use of deadly force is not allowed to protect property. Well, considering you guys have actions over this past weekend and last week of how you guys constantly tear gassing people protesters and shooting them with, excuse me, not rubber bullets. No, no, forgive me. They are actually metal bullets coated in rubber, and you people are shooting people at close range. That is gross, okay? Chief Hall, we are calling for your resignation at this moment. Mayor EJ, you need to do better as well. And our city manager, who's actually the one overseeing our city's budget, PC, you need to be fired as well. I yield my time. Speaker 99, Jennifer Ibarra. Please confirm that you can hear me and let me know when my minute and a half uh, starts. Thank you. We can hear you. I want to express my deep concern uh, about the handling of the Dallas police of the protest for Black Lives Matter. You can silence Black people and working class people anymore. Council member Chad West and Mayor Johnson, we need real actions. We're not idiots. We understand real change will not happen until we start divesting resources away from police in our communities. For Starters, no council member West, we do not need a blue for Black Lives Matter march. What we demand from you is to remove, remove Jenny's coffee from the police oversight board immediately. Time for you to have some huevos. We need people that understand marginalized communities. We also demand to call for Chief Hall to immediately stop DPD's destructive escalation tactics and terrorizing of, of police brutality protests. We demand to defund the DPD and invest in the community. We need first responders for mental health crisis. We need real safety for our black and brown communities. We need access to healthcare. We need to increase accountability measures for the DPD desperately. We're informed, we're organized, and we'll keep holding you accountable. I yield my time. Speaker 117, John Kirkpatrick. Uh, hi, yes, am I off mute? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, Sean Kirkpatrick from District 7. I'm calling to demand the city of Dallas divest from police and all exploitative forces, including prisons, fossil fuels, and surveillance. This means reducing the size of the police force and removal of military grade weapons and tactical gear, getting police out of our schools. As the city responds to the projected COVID 19 budget shortfalls, we must cut DPD's budget to support our communities. Police should not be in charge of handling mental health needs, managing the homeless population, continuing to ruin people's lives by enforcing the racist and failed war on drugs. Instead, we must invest in education, housing, health care, public services, community support that is not enforced by violence. We must immediately depopulate Dallas County jails, prisons, immigration detention centers, juvenile facilities. We must get, get our people out of cages where COVID-19 is spreading ra rampantly and ensure that they have what they need to be healthy and free through this pandemic and beyond. Uh, DPD must stop arresting peaceful protesters, exercising First Amendment rights, and putting them in great danger of catching COVID. Thank you. Speaker 170, Rasheel Walton. Yes, hello, Mayor. To quote the late great Martin Luther King, who who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. For those who are wondering why we are still protesting, I'm here to break it down for you. We want just and equal treatment of people of color. We are not ravenous dogs or are all criminals. We want a more just criminal justice system. A Tatiana Jefferson's murderer is walking free to this day after being released on bond. First, my fellow blacks overcame slavery. Then it was the Jim Crow laws. Then we got voting rights. Now the criminal justice system must be completely reformed. The use of force policies should be reviewed with the community. Mass budget cuts in policing to be used in black communities. Improve our education and fix our roads. Give us affordable housing and public health approaches. Reverend Al Sharpton said it best. George Floyd died from a knee on his neck, yet blacks have had white knees on their necks for hundreds of years. Remove your knees off our necks because we can't breathe. And I yield my time. Speaker 197, Cassandra Lazardi. You'll be given one minute to speak. The real initiative released yesterday is already failing to uphold its promises. There is no legitimacy in one minute speech times. A second meeting must be scheduled. Since I have not been given enough time to detail the trauma I experienced Monday night, here are my demands. I demand the resignation of Renee Hall and Janice Coffey from the Police Oversight Board 
following her anti-reform remarks. Todd West is acting undemocratically by refusing to listen to his constituents. Furthermore, it's clear that the new initiatives will result in more funding requests for DPD. Omar Novias, you represent my native district. You accepted a $50,000 PAC contribution. The 500 million DPD receives from this council is just going back into their pockets. You cannot expect all 647 people to believe that DPD could only afford to bring one pair of scissors for 647 hand ties. We must defund and divest. You all fail to realize that your claims of legitimacy have already been undermined by the released images of DPD unloading bricks. Eric Johnson, you may be the smartest person in the city council room, and you may all be smart, not smart enough. We must defund. I watched a 17 year old get shot in the head with a rubber bullet. And when we shouted at state troopers, you shot a kid. We were only met with more tear gas. Thank you. Speaker 192, Mark. Speaker 192, Marco Villegas, to be given one minute to speak. Marco Villegas. We'll move to Speaker 49, Luanji Herrera. Luan Janine Herrera. Can move to the next one. Speaker 100 and Gray oh. Fisher. Hello. Hi, can you confirm that you can hear me? Yeah, who is this? Uh, this is Ann Gray Fisher. Okay, yes. Okay, go ahead, begin. All right, thank you so much. I'm a historian of police in the 20th century US speaking to you today as a District 14 resident. I support the In Defense of Black Lives Dallas Coalition 10 point program. History teaches us that internal police reform like inclusive hiring and training will do nothing to stop police violence. These reforms only deliver more of the same violence that we are protesting today. The police cannot police themselves. In this urgent moment, the city must redistribute funding away from the DT DPD, and they must divest from state violence and invest in community health care, housing, and education. Police power must be reduced, defunded, and demilitarized. And that's why I support the In Defense of Black Lives Dallas Coalition today. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 75, Tatiana Farrow. Tatiana. I'm sorry, who? Hello. Yes, I'm Tatiana Farrow in District 6. Okay, begin. All right, we're lucky that the riots didn't start here in DFW because we've had several citizens murdered by officers. I think first we need to adopt the Hands Up Act which mandates a 15 year prison sentence for any officer found guilty of murder of an unarmed citizen. Dallas already did this in 2018 when Roy Oliver murdered teenager Jordan Edwards in Balch Springs. And this should be the standard response to officers murdering unarmed citizens. Second, we need to stop giving fines and warnings for vehicle maintenance traffic violations like taillights being out. And instead we need to help people remedy the situation. Police officers should refer citizens to the Department of Public Safety who should be in charge of posting that information on their website, teaching people how to fix these things themselves. Third, we need to amend the policy on how officers respond to suicide, domestic violence, and welfare calls. Like when a Tatiana Jefferson was murdered by Aaron Dean, who's still out on bail, the police should arrive with a crisis intervention professional who's trained in conflict de-escalation to assess the situation and help the victim determine, develop a long-term plan to safely get out and get the social services they need. And last, we need to amend the policy on how we use police officers to deal with mental health crises and clear out homeless people from public areas. Instead of calling the police, maybe we should have citizens call 311 and have a medical crisis intervention team sent out to engage with the person in need and get them the health care and social services they need. Thank you, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Speaker 98, Sarah Ashety. 
Yes. You may begin. Thank you. My name is Sarah Ashley. I'm a family medicine doctor and I'm new to the community. You know, I prepared a speech, but at this point, I don't think it's necessary to follow that script. Um, I'd really like to speak to the hearts and consciences of our leaders represented here today. Um, the people of Dallas are hurting. The people that they entrusted with their safety have betrayed their trust. A father is now grappling with how to explain Mo Monday's tragic events to his son. We already know this, that excessive police force is a form of violence on the community that significantly drives unnecessary and costly injury and premature morbidity, including mental health and trauma and death. As mentioned earlier today, Dallas citizens are already exhibiting signs of trauma in relation to Monday's event. While peacefully protesting, please, I'd like to challenge us to address police brutality as a public health issue. I'd like to challenge us not to just focus on lethal force, um, you know, but let's also pay attention to, you know, the other physical issues and, and mental injuries. As the gentleman said before today, blinding us without killing us is really not progress. Let's promote a vision in which the use of force is, you know, an absolute last resort, really. Let's get creative with devising policies that emphasize safety first, you know, not only for officers, but for members of the community at large. Rebuilding an environment of trust between the community and police force could only Thank mean you. safer place for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. 30, speaker 33, Jordan Giada, Giannata. Jordan Giannata. Gordon Giannata. Next, can you call the next one? Council members, we're having uh, technical difficulties again, so uh, bear with us a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know it's on there. I was about to do this. Three, Gordon Giannata. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Uh, hey, I'd just like to make sure I have a minute and 30 seconds, right? Because I did put my address on here. You do. Okay, cool. My name is Gordon Janata, and I'd like to start off by saying that black lives matter and that blue lives do not matter, as that is not a life at all. It is a career choice. I find the Dallas Police Department's use of force to provoke peaceful protesters in retaliation and using that subsequent retaliation as justification to impose citywide curfews as an egregious violation of our most basic rights. The dishonesty shown within the lies of DPD's public statements from the past week goes to show that this is not a case of a few bad apples but that this is in fact a rot that encompasses the entire system. Renee Hall, you specifically should be ashamed of what you allow your department to get away with. And every single officer who works for DBT should be ashamed for, for participating in a system obviously designed more for oppression than public safety. I'm immensely disappointed with the DPD and mayor. I request that Chief Renee Hall resign immediately. And I call on everyone in the position of power, especially Mayor Eric Johnson, defund the DPD and reallocate funding to social services to work to actually combat the issues that this city faces. That's it. Thank you. Speaker 134, Jennifer Cortez.
proud of you, bro. That was fantastic. That sounds good. <laughs> Very good. Seems like points were all well. I see the blue eyes. Yeah, you're the first one. I know. I was like, I've never said this kid yet. Because it's a career. <laughs> Okay, I think we're ready to go again. Your next speaker is speaker 55, Victoria Henderson. Ms. Henderson. Try uh, uh, Jennifer Cortez. They say they could hear us.
Alexandra Santos. We'll move to speaker 79, Alex Alexandra Sizemore. Hi, I have a few things I'd like to see um, as some quick, easy wins. Uh, first, I'd like to just double check to make sure that I've got the 90 seconds because I did give my address. You do. Thank you. Okay, first thing I would like to see is uh, banning the prone restraint position from ever being used again in Dallas. Um, the second thing is to implement mandatory de-escalation training for every officer, at least one full training day a year, preferably more. I would like to ban DPD from using any funds to purchase military surplus equipment. I'd like to give the Office of Community Police Oversight additional resources, funding, personnel, and jurisdiction over investigations that would currently be conducted by internal affairs. I would like to fill all three vacancies currently on the Community Police Oversight Board and grant it independence going forward. I would like to make it a crime for an officer not to report misconduct that they see one of their own coworkers committing. I'd like to make it a fireable offense to turn off a body cam or dash cam during the course of interaction with the public. I'd like to prevent police officers with prior misconduct in a different jurisdiction from being hired by DPD and uh, require DPD to disclose this conduct if an officer that previously worked there is applying for a job in a different jurisdiction and DPD is called for a reference. And finally, I would like to treat officers involved in shootings and situations involving excessive use of force in the same way that a member of the public who had committed the same crime would be. No more time to get their affairs in order and scrub their social media before an arrest is made. Thank you for your time, and I'll yield the rest of mine. Thank you. Speaker 95, Weston Lucas. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Weston Lucas of District 13. I'd like to begin by thanking the board for giving us the opportunity to speak. I've already sent my detailed account of what happened Monday night via email. Today, I would like to focus on ways we can improve DPD's interactions with the public and offer a list of changes we would like to see. On behalf of In Defense of Black Lives Coalition, we would like to see the following changes. Improve de-escalation techniques. No use of force as a first course of action. End broken win windows policing. Better community oversight. Independent investigations and prosecutions. Community representation. Body cams for all officers recording every stop interaction, more intensive training, implicit racial bias testing, and for profit policing, demilitarization, fair police union contracts, defund DPD, and channel monetary resources into improving community, uh, healthcare, and safety measures, et cetera. Before I yield the rest of my time, I would like to sincerely thank uh, city officials who have come out in support of flood testers. There's too many to name specifically. You know who you are, so thank you to the board. Dallas will remember your actions during this critical revolution. We have an opportunity to fundamentally change the way we police to stand out from every other police department across the nation. It will require innovation and creativity, but it needs to be done. The system didn't become broken over time. It was built broken, and it is our responsibility, all of us together, to fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 166, Alexis Sanchez, be given one minute to speak. If this city genuinely cares about moving forward, I urge you to listen without judgment or ego and make informed decisions based on evidence. I condemn the response of the Dallas Police Department to the peaceful protest on Monday, June 1st. I demand DPD is held accountable for the violent response to this protest. I request the following, divestment from police, investment in education, health, and safety of black people. Police apologize for centuries of abuse Policing should be demilitarized and accurate data collection to evaluate policing and crime. Mayor Eric Johnson, Police Chief Renee Hall, and City Council members, I ask you, are you holding up the oath you, look, you took to serve Dallas County residents? What action will you take to dismantle the deeply rooted white patriarchal system that legalizes racial discrimination? What actions will you take to eliminate racial disparities? Thank you. Speaker 124, Callum Bothrop. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. I am calling for the immediate defunding of the DPD and for the police budget to be redirected into community resources. 
We, the people of Dallas, demand investment in the education, health, and safety of black people. We call for our tax dollars to be removed from the funding of prisons, police, and surveillance. Why do we see the city failing to provide for the health care and personal protection of women while we die from COVID-19 and then turn around to see copious amounts of money spent on military-grade weapons used to commit war crimes on us for no reason? We demand that the members of our city most impacted by police violence control our laws, institutions, and policies that should be serving us, from our schools to our budgets, economy, police, and land. And we respect, re demand respect for the rights and the history of indigenous people. We demand an immediate depopulation of Dallas County jails, prisons, immigrant detention centers, and juvenile facilities. We must protect the freedom, health, and lives of our people from this pandemic and our police. We expect you to work radically, to radically transform our city and end the war on black people immediately. We are watching and we will remember what you do in this moment. Thank you. Speaker 87, Ben Wright. Hello, this is Ben Wright. Can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Thank you. My name is Ben Wright and I am proud to be a resident in District 2. Uh, I've been listening to the entirety of this uh, meeting and I've been inspired by the eloquent, impassioned and righteous remarks from my neighbors. It's clear that we have a problem in Dallas and that problem is the police. I would encourage the city council to do the proper moral act and defund, disband, and disarm the police. But if they can't take that act, uh, we have a practical um, compromise that's been put forward by the In Defense of Back Lives uh, Coalition. I'd encourage uh, all of the members to, to take a look at this. You've heard this mentioned dozens and dozens of times on this call, and there are thousands off of it who are in support of it. It's time for re to redirect funds from our overfunded, militarized, violent police force and towards the productive community uh, investment in education, in housing, and in mental health that actually creates community safety. So once again, I'll encourage you to please review the 10 new directions for public safety and positive community change from In Defense of Black Lives. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 61, Jashia Reed. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Hi, this is Jashia Reed. I live in District 6 and I would appreciate 90, 90 seconds, please. Um, Dallas has four policies that need to be implemented to help decrease the chances of another life being taken at the hands of officers. I'm gonna state these four policies. The first policy is to ban chokeholds and strangleholds, which Minneapolis has already done today. Require warning before shooting, duty to intervene, and the fourth policy is to ban shooting at moving vehicles. I demand to know what the police force is going to do to ensure that these policies are implemented so that we can prevent another senseless death. And second, if these policies are not going to be acted upon, how are these officers going to be held accountable moving forward? I demand to know that you all are going to revisit these policies, defund the police, invest in our community, and fund mental health facilities. Or ultimately, we will revisit the voting polls and continue peacefully protesting in the streets. In closing, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And I'm disappointed with how unorganized this entire speaking process has been. Thank you, and I yield my time. Thank you. Speaker 201, Shalom Gipsawi. You'll be given one minute to speak. Hi, this is Shalom. I would like to speak about my experience from Monday night on the bridge. Since then, I have not ate or slept due to being traumatized by the events that happened. I am disappointed in the police chief for her orders on Monday and the fact that she has not shown any empathy in regards to her actions, which shows a true lack of leadership. How can you try to stop citizens from exercising their First Amendment when the reason she's in the position that she's in is because over 50 years ago, true leaders marched on a bridge for her rights? I believe an investigation needs to be open on Dallas Police Department, and they need to be held accountable for their actions in regards to the current protests that have happened. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 135, Princess McDowell. Ms. McDowell? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. 
uh, black queer women representing District 10, 75243, uh, I want to start with a quote. We're asking cops to do too much in this country. Every societal failure we put off on the cops to solve. Not enough mental health funding, let the cops handle it. Schools fails, let's give it to the cops. That's too much to ask. Policing was never meant to solve all these problems. Who said this? Former Dallas Police Chief David Brown. Today I am not asking police to solve the problems of the community. They've proven themselves incapable. Peaceful protesters exercising their First Amendment right to assembly and those of us who watch the protests online are traumatized by DPD's actions over the weekend and during Monday's abhorrent display of force. Brandon Saez lost an eye after he was shot with those so-called less lethal ammunition. I demand radical policing change in Dallas, and that starts with demilitarizing and divesting from DPD, investing in communities and depopulating our jails and juvenile facilities, especially amidst this coronavirus crisis. This year's budget allocates over $561 million to DPD, and that is critically and absolutely unacceptable. I support the in defense of Black Lives Dallas Coalition and their 10-point platform and demand the reallocation of, of public money to health and safety measures. This city, my city that I grew up in, has an opportunity to convert the necessary actions of the police into the hands of the people so that we can all be safe. Dallas will remember your actions in this time, and the time is now. Black Lives Matter. Black Trans Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 44, Stephen Contreras. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Hello. Perfect. All right, first and foremost, I'm calling for the implementation of the points demanded by the In Defense of Black Lives Dallas Coalition and the eight policies from the eight Can't Wait um, program along with the resignation of Chief Hall. Dallas Police Department has proven to be unworthy of the trust of the, Dal the citizens of Dallas. The tear gas and quote unquote less lethal weapons that have been used are unacceptable on Dallas citizens. And as an example, the loss of Brian Stein's eye in a peaceful protest downtown, along with the shooting of the woman downtown coming back from getting groceries. This is just unnecessary and unacceptable in the city of Dallas. Um, Dallas Police Department should not be getting 500, more than $500 million for the 2021 fiscal year with uh, the activities that they've been doing, and we need to demilitarize them and put, those mo put that money towards uh, better uses in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 59, Nino Testa. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Again. Yes. Great. My name is Nino Tessa. I'm the Associate Director of the Department of Women and Gender Studies at TCU. I live in District 1 of Dallas. I'm disgusted by my city's treatment of Brandon Sands. I have not yet heard from my mayor, my city council representative, Chad West, or any member of city council about how we will work for justice for Brandon. Last year, when I was on a run in District 6, I stopped to call the city because I saw a disturbing piece of anti-Semitic graffiti etched in the cement of the sidewalk. I was pleased to find that the cement block was promptly removed and replaced by the city. Tell me why an act of symbolic violence, as appalling as that violence was, was taken more seriously than an act of physical violence against a black person exercising his constitutional rights to assembly and free speech. Brandon lost his eye at the hands of our city's police, which is to say at the hands of our city, which is to say at our hands. The city of Dallas, oh, excuse me, the city of Dallas uh, needs to have a public conversation about the, just, what justice looks like for Brandon, and at the bare minimum should be paying all of his medical expenses. Violence done to Brandon is a prime example of why our city needs to reimagine our lives outside of the logics of carcerality, militarization, and state-sanctioned violence. I want to thank the organizers in defense of Black Lives Dallas for their impressive demands, which will benefit all members of the Dallas community. I fully support their call to defund, demilitarize, and divest from the Dallas Police Department and reallocate its budget to community services and investments in Black communities of Dallas. Thank you. Speaker 112. Daniel Litwin. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, you may begin. Fantastic. So uh, my name is Daniel. I'm from District 14 and a member of DSA North Texas and was one of the uh, almost 700 people detained unjustly on Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. I just want to point out, where were all the supposed good cops that night when hundreds of police officers gassed and shot at peaceful protesters? detaining and threatening weak charges as we stood in solidarity with black lives in our community. The cops must have all been chilling at home because all I saw Monday night were complicit cops. 
cops voting about how we'd all go to jail, cops telling us they hope they don't see us out again, which can only be interpreted as asking us to refrain from using our First Amendment rights or we'd be met with force again. Cops that launch gas and rubber bullets into the crowd indiscriminately. Not one police officer challenged the actions I saw on that bridge. Chief Hall defended them completely. These are, quote, good cops. This is why this is no longer an argument about which cops are good and which are bad and which are nice to you and your friends and family. The entire system orders and creates complicit attitudes regardless of who you are. It's about rethinking the functions of our police department. The only tangible material change we've gotten from our police department since then has been a duty to intervene policy, some kneeling, and a George Floyd Remembrance Day. Uh, this is not enough to end police militarization, police brutality, and an institutionally racist system. I demand defunding the Dallas Police Department, and if the goal of the Dallas Police Department and our city leadership is to actually deter and stop crime, the city should put resources into ending the variables that cause crime and uh, rather than supporting violently policing the community. So we demand divestment from the police and investment in the community, specifically black, brown, and poverty-stricken communities, to organizations that work with and grow with and understand their con uh, constituents, not dehumanize and police them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Speaker 132, Hosanna Yamiru. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin. Okay, my name is Hosanna Yamiru. I live in District 11. Um, I am here today to echo the sentiments of my neighbors um, and asking that Chief Hall resign immediately and to defund DPD. I am also here to express my disappointment and anger at the utter lack of leadership that has come out of the horseshoe, especially from Mayor Johnson. We demand that the mayor set aside his ego and differences and work in tandem with Judge Jenkins and council members to actively address our concerns. I urge you all to meet with the organizations who have already put forward 10 demands that are necessary for us to move forward. The real plan you have set forward does absolutely nothing. I would also like to say that although my city councilman, Lee Klein, and I have disagreed on virtually everything, I've always found this open contempt for the DPA fascinating and quite endearing. It is my hope that Councilman Simon will be an unlikely leader when it comes to budget season. I can't think of a better time for you to flex your muscles than when you are term limited and already deeply hated by the DPA. I demand that you all fight to cut the quote unquote public safety budget and invest more funds toward housing and human services in the city of Dallas. Black lives matter, so it's about time you act like it or these same black lives will vote you out. Thank you. Thank you. I will now go through all of the speakers that I'm showing I have not called. When I call your name, if you're present, just say present, we'll pause and you will get your time to speak. Melissa Perry. It's not present. Deanna Lafay. Okay. Edna Pemberton, not present. Chris, Melissa Williams, not present. I would be there. Chris Keith. Not present. Nathaniel Orbring. Not present. Dale Greer. Present. Dale Greer. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You may begin. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of background noise, so I don't know if y'all can hear that. But, uh, for the record, I'm not dentist Dale Greer. That's my cousin. My name is Dale Greer, District 14, lifelong citizen of Dallas, here to talk about the betrayal on the bridge. In, pre in previous protests, I've always felt the police were there to protect me and my right to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. So I feel deeply betrayed by their actions Monday night. I was at the rally and marched with the peaceful marchers under a beautiful sunset that evening. My buddy and I were at the back of the column. On Riverfront Boulevard, we heard no command to stay off the bridge, no warning that people would be arrested. We only heard an officer on a bullhorn telling people to keep moving. If they didn't want people to go up the ramp, they would have put up a police line to block marchers. 
Their intent was to kettle people on the bridge for the purpose of arresting them on. They could have made a police, uh, they could have made a public relations masterstroke for themselves and for the city of Dallas if they had acted honestly and had not betrayed us that night. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Nelman. Not present. Javar Wright. Not present. One Weekly. Not present. William Hopkins. <clears throat> it's not present. Tommy Smith. It's not present. Clea Arvizo. It's not present. Diane Smith. It's not present. Dominique Alexander. Not present. Terry Larry. Present. Present. Hold on, hold on. Present. Present. You may begin. Hello, my name is Minister Dominique Alexander, President and Founder of the Next Generation Action Network. Uh, first, I want to say this is very uh, oppressive uh, system, and I believe that this shows the actions of the city of Dallas is the reason why we will not stop protesting until this city gets serious about real change. What we saw today is totally, uh, totally discrimination and why this, why this city is so separate. We saw the mayor do an event by himself. We saw police unions do an event by themselves. Rather than coming together, rather than combining forces, just joining and listening to the protests that they want to dictate. And yet the audacity to look before Black Lives, that is greater outright disrespectful. I also want to talk about the savage behavior of the police department on Monday. The savage behavior that came from the leadership all the way to the bottom. This chief of police lied on us and lied on me. And I outright do not like it. It was outright disrespectful. What you tried to do was get down the county judge Clay Jenkins to shut down the Frank Crowley courthouse. That failed. And what you wanted to do was lie on me. I had canceled people who actually lied on me. If you wanted to say that Dominique Alexander did something, pick up the phone and call Dominique Alexander. But this city is a failure. And guess what? We cannot talk about anything until this city gets real and real become. So since this city cannot get real, we might as well just go and start busy counting members out until this city starts to get serious. Thank you. I give my name. Terry Larry is not present. Emmanuel Benton not present. Samantha Salinas is not present. No, this not present. Okay. You may begin. Emmanuel? Emmanuel Benton. Yes. You may uh, begin. I'm, my name is Emmanuel Benton. I'm speaking on behalf of United here, Local 23. Uh, my organization represents 1,000 airline catering workers in the DFW International Airport. The job of the city of, of the police of Dallas is to protect and save lives. <clears throat> uh, we want to thank Mayor Johnson for accepting President Obama's challenges to engage on broader community in reviewing and reforming the city policy, the, the city policy regarding the police force. We will work on an opportunity to provide feedback on this reform. But I must, I want to say one thing, only one thing. Any police violence against black people is only the first step because black people have suffered from racial and economic inequality in this country for 400 years. Yes, we want to live, and we want to live with dignity. 
We want to live, and we want to live with affordable health care in the case we contact coronavirus. We want to live, and we want to uh, save for retirement. We want to live, and we want to be able to pay our bills and provide for our family. The sale of dollars must address these economic issues also in order to create a community and outcome that allow all of us to prosper together. We stand ready to support any injustice in Dallas, and we are willing to help in whatever we may to help the city of Dallas. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you. Right on time. Samantha Salinas, not present. Praylin Rogers, not present. Kennedy Montgomery, not present. Jabril Locke, not present. Olinka Green, Not present. Michelle Torres. Not present. Martha Martha Hop, Hopson. I'm sorry. Martha Hopson. Not present. Christopher Ellison. Not present. Melvin Griffin. It's not present. Britannica Scott. Not present. Justin Boyd. not present. Lorena Garcia. Man. Lorena Garcia. Lorena. Okay. Raina Garcia, not present. PJ Almanza. Uh, Ashley Salazar. Not present. Jeffrey Strabisky. Unbelievable. Not present. Hero Luna. Not present. Cynthia Mulcahy. Not present. Joyce Manilo. Not present. Omar Jimenez. Lorena Garcia. Isis Kazida, Kazidi. Lorena Garcia. Yes, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I've been here since one o'clock. Uh, well, okay, my name's we Marina appreciate Garcia. that. Yes, sir. Well, my, late, my name's Marina Garcia. I am a top member and I reside uh, in District to, 5. Uh, make some sense out of this madness. Um, uh, 
Hey, uh, the name of the As someone who was completely uh, disappointed with what I saw happen yeah, Monday night in the city um, that I deeply Kobe, care about. I, I need to have While I was not at Monday's protest, it was painful and disturbing to watch hundreds you know of people protesters call me. Me right now who were simply using right their now. voice and First Amendment right. right to speak out against injustice treated in such an inhumane way that they were. As someone from a military family, the Marine Corps at that, what I saw shocked and really upset me. The law enforcement officials that were that we are supposed to trust to serve and protect us should not be responding to peaceful protesters like this. Overall, I have just really been disappointed in DPD's handling of the protests that have been spurred by the police brutality. My taxes are basically going toward paying my local police department to rough up peaceful protesters practicing their rights. We need to overhaul this system because people like me are tired. We're tired of the injustice and brutality. In a nutshell, I have lost my faith in, in Police Chief Renee Hall to execute her duties. Here in Dallas, and she should she should step down. We need to really rethink poli oh, policing in our community, and she doesn't seem like the person to do it. We need bold change, and we're tired of seeing black and Latino residents killed at the hands of police. Let's act now and get to, get to work. We can't afford to let our city down. And thank you so much for your time, Mayor Johnson and City Council. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hazadi? I know, but I'm going through the list. Thomas Warson is not present. Maria Avalos. It's not present. Carnies Adams I'm on speaker 118. It's not present. Christian Basket. Not present. Jessica Roberts. Not present. Rosalia Ramirez. I sure didn't call him for them. Not present. Christopher Say. Not present. Ben Kino. I really hate this. Amber B. Matt. Not present. Lapria Pierce. Not present. Aliyah Salem. Not present. Tamara Neal. Not present. Jessica Bauer. Not present. Teresa Wynn. Not present. Alexis McKinney. Not present. Shanice Condren. Not present. Michael Morris. Not present. Marissa Ocampo. Okay. Dentessa Carson. Shantavia Carter. Not present. Joseph Francis. Not present. Sydney Brown. Not present. 
Erica Otero. Not present. Amber Brown. Not present. Sherry James. Not present. Gaini Ayide. Not present. Jordan Rinker. Not present. Sydney Duncan. Not present. Natasha Hughes. Not present. Dior Robinson. Not present. Shanique Lewis. Not present. Natalia Vega. Natalia Vega. Or Natalie Vega. My apologies. It may be Natalie Vega. Not present. Sarah Passon. Not present. Jessica McCadney. Not present. Ebony Turk. Not present. Jenna Pichowski. Jenna Prostowski. I'm on 174. Sarah Passon. Present. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much for your patience. Go ahead. The police are a, uh, are, the police are a symptom of a larger system of oppression, of consumerism, of American feudalism and violence against the people in order to keep profit margins up and property secure. They are the enforcement arm of a vast system built to benefit a small number of people. Their methods are the same as all ruling violent bodies, divide and conquer, agitate, and trick into action, then retaliate. They are a direct manifestation of classicism and exist to keep the working people in their place. We must redirect resources into our community can be a leader in this. As DPD Chief Brown said, we are asking cops to do too much in this country. Every society failure, we put it off on the cops to solve. Not enough mental health funding, let the cops handle it. Here in Dallas, we got a loose dog problem, let's have the cops chase the loose dogs. Schools fail, let's give it to the cops. That's too much to ask, that's just too much to ask. Policing was never meant to solve all those problems. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yvette? Could you say that again? Tanner? Tanner Giesick? Tanner Giesick? Okay. Lindsay Nitch? Nietzsche. Nietzsche, I'm sorry. You may begin. You'll be given one minute to speak. Lindsay, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. Hello, are you there? We'll go back to Amber Brown. Amber Brown, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much for your patience. 
Yes. Um, my, all right. So I'm a Dallas native resident, and I've attended some of the protests that have occurred uh, and uh, witnessed the trauma of my loved ones being shot by rubber bullets and the indescribable trauma that's come from this. This is a humanitarian issue. Dallas has blatantly refused to respect the constitutional rights of its citizens by shooting at us, gassing us, flash bombing us, and forcing us to fear for our lives. This is real. A great example of Dallas's lack of concern for police brutality is how in District 4, Councilwoman Ar Arnold has requested state troopers to come in, and this is an over-policing tactic which only results in um, disproportion disproportionately affecting people of color. Dallas should implement immediate actions on how they will allow protesters uh, a safe avenue to do so and exercise their constitutional rights. Dallas should reform its use of force policy and strengthen the Community, community Policing Oversight Board and, uh, and increase its funding. Uh, Dallas needs to end cash bail. Other cities have done it. I don't see why we cannot do the same. Thank you, um, ma'am. That is your time. This. Thank you okay, so thank much. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Speaker 179, William Sander. Not present. Tyriana Bird. Not present. Priscilla Yeverino. Not present. Anthony Atchison. Not present. Ashley Glass. Not present. Libby Wolverton. Hello. Can you hear me? Please? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Is this Miss Wolverton? Yes, Libby Wolverton. Wonderful. I'm Thank, you. And I, Go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Libby, and I work in Dallas serving young women who are experiencing or are at risk of experiencing homelessness. James 2, 14 to 26 reminds us that faith without works is dead. Spending thoughts and prayers while remaining silent and not acting has never been enough and cannot be the standard response any longer. We must act. You must act. I call upon you to do the work that backs up your words. I call on you to enact policies that restrict the use of force by police, that immediately removes officers from armed patrol duty following a use of deadly force incident pending investigation, and that requires DPD and the Office of the DA to investigate past fatal police-involved shootings to determine needed policies. Other cities across the state and country have their eyes on you. Do the work to enact these needed policies. I stand unequivocally with the uh, In Defense of Black Lives pinpoint platform. I yield my time. Thank you very much. Julio Acosta. Not present. Lejuma O. Not present. Tamara Griggs. Not present. Luanji Carrera, yeah, speaker 49. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we yeah, can. my name is Leajene Carrier. Um, I'm in District 5. Chief Renee Hall should be reprimanded and ashamed for allowing the use of chemical weapons that cause choking and coughing. 
Having a large group of people confined to a small area in that manner will likely worsen the COVID spread. The mayor and the council should issue an apology to the Dallas residents on that bridge, and there should be a statement regarding why the FBI was on that bridge collecting protesters' information. Furthermore, the real initiative was released as a strategic political move that gives the impression Dallas City Council actually cares about its residents. An actual response to demands of citizens would have been a long-term initiative on what divesting from police looks like for a city. It will never make sense why this city has $500 million reserved for funding the police, but a mere $12 million reserved for housing solutions when we all know housing stability is a major crisis. Having briefly interned for you at the state legislator, Mayor Johnson, I know you are a man more capable of lip service and press conference that doesn't result in any real action. A lot of federal aid meant to mitigate the economic impacts of COVID will dry up in July, and I implore you to focus your efforts and your funding on filling in that gap for your residents instead of creating initiatives trying to further justify why we need police. People will say free COVID tests in Pleasant Grove are an earnest commitment to protecting the health of black and brown residents, but no one will highlight that those tests being used have a 15% inaccuracy rate. Dallas leadership can do a whole lot better. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Henderson is speaker 55. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Go right ahead. Hi. Thank you so much. My name is Victoria Brogan Henderson, and I'm a resident of District 9. The eyes of the city, the nation, and indeed the world are on Dallas, Texas, which is not for the first time, and I'm sure it will not be the last. Many friends of mine recently have attended protests skeptically, assuming that in the past, any altercations between protesters and police were due to the protesters. They walked away from these experiences changed. Why are we still having to address the disproportionate violence and inequitable treatment by Dallas police so many years, even after the 1973 murder of Santos Rodriguez? We've had countless deaths, countless lives, and many people's lives ruined by the actions of law enforcement here in town. No profession is above scrutiny. I am very optimistic and I appreciate the Citizens Oversight Police Board, but I do have grave concerns about a few of its members whose viewpoints publicly expressed do show a conflict of interest for the minorities and the other people in this city who are disproportionately affected by police brutality and inequity. I believe those board members should not serve the board as they do not serve and represent enough of the people. The board must be strong and willing to truly dig deep as DPD seems to only be willing to grow in its militarization and brazenness. Our change is beyond overdue. Thank you. Thank you. We'll start back with speaker 194. Nijoma, oh. Yes, my name is Nijoma Nijaka. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. I'm a member and a resident of District 1 here in Dallas. And what I want to ask and what I'm, I would like to see done in this city is to have the mayor, to have the city council members to review the task force report and to look at the use of force policy that we have in place, it seems that what I've found out in the past is that police are often told and allowed to use as much force as possible. There needs to be restraint. There needs to be clear guidelines so that we don't have police going beyond the line of what is, what is deemed necessary. So again, I, I want that looked at and what is the mayor doing to have that review? What is the, the, the police um, department chief looking at? Are they looking at this task force report and when do they plan to review the policy? Thank you. Malik Shabazz. Not present. Catherine Wingate, speaks 200. Not present. Jennifer Severson. Is not present. Penny Reese. Not present. Michael Gonzalez. Michael. 
not present. Maria Rocha. Is not present. Adam Blankenship. Not present. Hamtola Lapria Pierce, Speaker 128, is on the line. Lapria Pierce? Yes, present. Go ahead, Ms. Pierce. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you. I grew up in Dallas and have experienced police brutality and abuse from my teenage years, and it hasn't stopped in my 42 years. We are citizens, not enemy soldiers. We are black, black not enemy soldiers. Criminalizing Black Lives Matters organizations, citizens, and protesters, and it is an act of character assassination, and it is extremely irresponsible. I was on that bridge Monday and experienced the betrayal and uh, the ambush, and I supported the chief of police in sharing the information where she said that she'd allow a peaceful protest only to ambush us all and assault us with military force. It is extremely irresponsible to go live publicly using language that criminalizes the Black Lives Matter organizations and me as an individual and to say that there were people there that were doing anything illegal. As far as carrying a weapon, that was also untrue, as the person with the weapon had a license to carry and a legal gun. I believe that the chief of police should give a public apology to all of the protesters and the people that she criminalized, because this is being seen not only in Dallas, but this is what the nation is seeing, and this is what the world is seeing. And these are the images that are portrayed for black people all across the world, and we have a responsibility to get it right. I believe that the chief of police needs to that, make that public. That is your time, ma'am. Thank you very much. 111, speaker 111, Kevin Hicks. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hicks, is that you? Yes, sir. Go ahead, please, thank you very much. Before I say anything else, I wanted to just put in there the two main points I wanted to support that have been repeated over and over and over again is to uh, to defund the police and, and, and put those resources back into other parts of our community that are actually the root problems of crime and also to address uh, Chief Hall, uh, they're asked to have her resign or at the very least apologize. I mean, the leadership that was not shown and the militarization of our police was just awful to see over the weekend. I wanted to say quickly that I heard a call earlier where actually somebody that was incarcerated was, was actually put on to speak and it touched my heart because as a formerly incarcerated person, but a white person, I see the privilege that I was given through the criminal justice system and I see the uneven handedness that's given to black people as they go through this system. And I wonder how we can expect to heal anybody uh, when we when we treat them so disproportionately at every level of our system, so to come out uh, against our citizens in a militarized fashion, I don't I don't even know how we we expected any of this at all w was not to be expected, and how we can expect anybody to do better uh, when when our city won't do better. Thank you. Thank you. Tamara Griggs. Hello. Yes, can Ms. you hear Griggs. me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, I'm calling today as a mother with concerns of the uh, peaceful protesters that were arrested and received charges by DPD. The majority of those protesters were young adults. Um, children that were in college and just starting their careers. And so I'm asking that the mayor, 
the city manager, the DA's office, and the judges all sit down and have a conversation about dismissing all of those charges. Um, we don't want to continue to dehumanize our youth and citizens of Dallas by dragging them through court processes. There were some wrong decisions made. And so they should negatively impact our young adults' education, careers, and futures due to false misdemeanor charges and felony charges. So as adults, we should have taken this opportunity to teach our young adults their First Amendment rights will impact positive change. Instead, we stayed on that hamster wheel of systematic racism and police brutality. Um, a young man in West Dallas that I believe that in once stated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jenna Kostowski. Jenna Prostowski. Prostowski. Hello? Jenna Prostowski or Prostowski? Prostowski. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi. Um, I wanted to say that I saw a quote the other day, and I thought it was about um, what's going on right now and George Floyd's death, but it was about police brutality in the 1960s. And this is about 60 years later, and we're still dealing with the same issue. And I'm saying that it's the best, in the best interest for all of us to tackle the issue of police brutality because excessive force and poor policing not only hurts civilians, but also makes police officers in our communities unsafe. And in preparation for this meeting, I spoke to my sister and my brother-in-law, who is a police officer, and I asked about realistic changes that we can make in order to improve policing in our communities. And some of the following are their suggestions and some are mine, and they're not in any particular order. More intensive training and de-escalation, training in the treatment of citizens with mental illness and citizens of diverse backgrounds, development of appropriate tactics like takedown tactics and other tactics used when arresting citizens, the police department should consult with medical personnel to determine how to successfully subdue a subject without injuring or suffocating them. Officers should get more involved in the communities they serve, should be a part of an That's ongoing dialogue. That's your time, ma'am. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Your next speaker will be Jessica Roberts. Jessica Roberts is not present. Joyce Manilo. Thank 
Anilo is not present. Mr. Mayor, I've gone through the, the names of the individuals, of the registered speakers that I that did not speak. And I've this concludes your speakers list for this meeting, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I really appreciate you all um, working so hard to try to get through that with the technological issues that we're we're having here is pretty pretty uh, challenging, but I think you guys did a, a good job. So uh, the best we could do under the circumstances at least. So thank you so much for that. Um, members, I appreciate your patience too. And of course, I appreciate uh, all of you out there in the, in the public who signed up to speak. And um, uh, thank you for bearing with us and being, being patient. So that with that, we are going to say that the um, public um, portion of our meeting um, has concluded. Our open microphone speaker portion has concluded, and we're.